Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical yeah. therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. We are also both parents. Exactly. We both have children and uh, we both have been nagging parents at times. If you're a physical therapist, if your parent is a physical therapist, you grow up a little differently than some of the other kids That's because, right. because your physical therapist parent is going to give you advice about your body and posture and things yeah, that we you... notice. <laughs> Ten things physical therapists tell their children not to ever do. Yes. So let's go ahead and get started, Brad. And the first one might be surprising a little bit to some of you, and I can't do this, Brad, but when you see little, little kids sit W style, like this, yep. and then this other leg would be up like this too. So that leg is that way, and that leg and is that, that way. like this way. Yeah, <laughs> and they sit there and they're watching TV. Yeah. What this is doing is actually it's putting the stress on the tibia here, mm -hmm. and it's turning it outward, Brad. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you do this day after day, the bone is growing that way. Sure. And um, so what happens? You're going to end up walking what we call duck style, where your right. feet are out turned out like this. I walk yeah. like that naturally, but I don't think it's from that. That's another story. But, you know, this is like, as therapists, you therapists, you know, this is Wolf's Law. Right. Right. Yeah, the and bone gets shaped after, from the stresses. Right. So, yep. So it's just, let's, let's not have your kids doing that. It's, it's stretching ligaments and such that you want to do. By the way, many of you might be uh, new to our channel. Right. And uh, if you are, please take a second to subscribe. We have a subscribe button over it, here. It's on either the, there or up there. Yeah. And uh, we upload videos every day on how to stay healthy, fit, and pain free. Exactly. All right. That's number one. Number two, Brad, uh, we don't want our kids standing with locked knees. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can keep it down here, Lonnie, since that's, I'm going to be down here. A lot of kids will lock their knees like this, here, and what they lock oh. their knees, then they do this with their body, and they're, they're in this bad posture. Right, posture, posture, posture. And what happens after a while, they start to stretch the back of their knee out. Mm -hmm. And this happened to me. My knee was getting worse and worse, and you start jamming the knee, and you start getting pain. And he's a therapist. And I'm a therapist. <laughs> I remember the first time it was pointed out to me. I was a student. I was, like, okay. I was shocked. <laughs> but the other thing is that you really don't want to you know, put your feet up on a, on a stool and let the back of your knees stretch out like this. Just do it with this knee button. Yeah, unless you're elderly and right. you're tight, then you could. But, but really, by, by doing this, you're stretching the knees out and yep. You are a little hyperextended. I am a little hyperextended, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I never do this, I never, I never sit with my feet. Right. You can sit like this. Exactly. I mean, because there's, there's no stretch on the knees. Plus, but. if you're a kid, you got some kid siblings, you know, they might try and sit on yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. And you got some real problems. You grew up with brothers, did you? <laughs> so did I. All right, number three is the one I'm sure you're all aware of that we would definitely be making corrections all the time is slouched posture. Oh, yeah. It is amazing how many problems result because of slouched, slumped posture and like this. And it starts as soon as you're able to sit at the supper table and eat, uh, yeah. is what I always say. I started having pain from a slouch posture. This was before I was a therapist. Okay. I was in college. Mm -hmm. And I started getting this really sharp pain right here. I'm like, yep. what is that coming from? And yeah, I used to sit like this. Yeah. And so we, we you know, it's going to affect your neck. It's going to affect your shoulder. One thing we like, Brad and I like to do is show how high you can move the shoulder when you're slouched right. and how high you can move the shoulder when you got good posture. Yep. It affects so. the shoulder joints, the breathing, the neck. It, it just, it's a part of life. Yep. Plus, you look terrible. Right. I mean, you look you look older. You look yeah. You, look like you want to get a job. You're going for an interview. You're yeah. looking like this. Right. Yeah. That's really going to open some eyes. Yeah. Well, we really love the nag. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we got this. I got to tell you this little story. You know, because I since my daughter is old enough at the supper table, sit up tall, and she still talks about that. But in high school, her classmates would say, "Why do you sit that way?" Because she had a oh, habit sure. of sitting tall, and she said. You know, she knew what I was, what they were talking about because I harped on her for the last 10 years. And she looked like a confident young lady is what she does. Looks like an attractive young lady because she's well, so Oh, yeah, it makes a big difference. All my, I have three kids, and they all they all correct on this. They all joke about it, but they all have good posture now, and they all, <laughs> they're all well aware of it. So Parents, think, beware. Young parents and little kids, this is good information. Number four, with their cell phones, the same thing. Grab, mm. Why don't you grab your cell phone? Um, yeah, what are kids doing now? Yep, they're bending over like this. Mm. 
they're, they're getting tendonitis in their thumbs and hands and their neck is here like this and oh my So you goodness. really want to do the, what we call the Tyrannosaurus Rex arms where you bring it up to you like this. So you don't have to bring your neck down to it. So just bring it up like this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no problem with, you know, nobody's going to make fun of you for, for going like this. Are we saying something, Bob? I was texting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are on number five now. Now we're veering off in a little bit of a different direction, Brad. Um, for those of you who have athletes, and I see this all the time, and I've seen this, there was a tendency to, that I want to do it, especially if you, a, if you have a kid that's a good athlete. Let's say uh, right now I have a patient, Brad. She's an mm -hmm. eighth grader, and they, she's a good athlete, so she practices with the eighth grader, and then they wanted to practice with varsity too. Mm -hmm. So she's practicing two practices a day. Mm -hmm. Then on the weekend, this is in basketball, on the weekend she's doing volleyball. <laughs> So she, she has no time for the body to recover. Right. And that's exactly what's happening. It's breaking down. She's getting patellofemoral syndrome now. Yep. And, and, and all these things are occurring. Uh, she got tendonitis yep. on her ankle or on a, her Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. All these things occur because the body has no time to recover. You definitely need that rest time. You need the sleep time. It's like when you lift weights. You don't go through your, you know, do your 10 sets and then go right to another one. You, you need that rest time, 30 seconds, a minute. Time. That recovery time to get fresh blood, let the muscles or get that Recovery oxygen. time yeah, is as important, would you say, Brad, as the workout. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. the sleep and the rest. Uh, and, so, and I know everybody's got homework now, but... You know, you, when you're a kid, you need that eight, nine, ten hours of sleep. Right. I mean, it, it really is important. So, all right, next thing uh, with lifting. We will try to teach people, you know, you're not going to want to have your legs straight and bend forward like this. This mm -hmm. is what you see. Everybody lift up. Right. They? So they tell you, okay, bend with your knees, right? Straight, you know, bend your knees. Mm -hmm. But you can bend your knees and still lift cr incorrectly. Right. So Brad and I have showed this very many times, but if you're lifting correctly, you're going to have three contact points. You know, there's a, a yeah, let's board turn this behind way you. a little bit, Bob. You're going okay. to have head, mid back, and low back. I'm lifting correctly. If I lift incorrectly, I have one contact point. All right. This is a gap yeah. here. There's a gap here, and right there. Even though my knees are bent, or... I'm still lifting incorrectly. All right. Learn this early on. Learn the pattern early on, and you're going to, for the rest of your life, you're going to benefit from this because you're going to be lifting correctly and not have problems. And one thing that people always do is when there's first, especially, I don't know, this might be sexist, but I, I'd say females more than guys, is they keep their feet close together. If you're going to yeah. lift, get that wide base, get your head and back. Athletic. All right, the next thing, Brad, uh, with driving, which, you know, we hate to even see our kids drive, but when they, <laughs> when they drive, <laughs> we want to make sure their seat's not all, leaning all the way back like right. this, and they're forward like this, and their arms are up on the, on the steering wheel like right. this. And you got this gooseneck posture yeah. here. What they want to do is go ahead and put the seat upright, mm -hmm. and they're going to arms are going to be this. This part is actually going to be, you know, vertical. Vertical, right? Yeah. And you want to be at the eight and four. If you're eight at the, and four, what are you talking the, about? If you had a clock, okay, you put your hands at four o'clock and eight o'clock. So you're here and here, not, not up, up here, here. Right. yeah. And this is safe, and this mm -hmm. is, this will put you in the right position, and and stop you from moving. This is one thing I, I personally do when I have my patients do it is normally there's a head rest back here and I always say you should be able to bring your head back and touch that within less than an inch or even touch that. Then you know your head's up in the right position. Right. Because a lot of times if you're thinking about you know, the road, you're thinking about something else, your head will be going forward and forward, and you won't even realize you're four inches away from there. You're getting all the stress built up in here. Things are going on. So teach your kids at an early yeah, age. We're just trying to prevent pain here. You know, yeah. we're trying to get you away from, from having pain. Uh, same thing is with a laptop or uh, an iPad. Um, with the laptop, if you have it down here, what are you going to do? You're going to be down like this because you're right. looking at the screen. The screen would be right here. So ideally, you put the laptop up on a stand or up on books, and I've, you have a separate keyboard. I've got mine on a cardboard box. It's eight inches tall, and it gets it up in here. We bought a keyless, uh, a, a key wireless, <laughs> a wireless keyboard. keyboard. Twenty dollars is all it costs. It works great, yeah. and I can work down here. The screen's up here. Some even come with a separate keyboard now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Sure. So I mean, you know, and the same with the a, a iPad. You want to have the iPad up here and, yeah, and a separate keyboard. You can use a wireless mouse. They come together as yeah, a kit. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for the amount of time people spend on on their electronic devices oh, now, right. you really need to. Kids doing homework all night long. Number nine. Uh, there's a lot of gym exercises that we we tell kids not to do. I mean, toe touches, uh, full sit-ups are bad on your back. Um, you want to do a good mornings, Brad? 
yeah, the one where you go like this, wait behind here, and they're doing these things. Really good way to put a lot of stress on your low back. Uh, they do it for hamstring strengthening, whatever. It's, it's not a good technique. There's a whole video we have on that. I don't think we'll go into that anymore. But uh, the final thing, number 10, is we want to make sure that they don't ever ignore our advice because we're always right. Yeah, if that's, you're, that's right. the number 10 and, thing and we tell them. Parents know that. Parents know that we're <laughs> always right. Kids don't know that it takes them a while, sometimes 20, 30 years before they realize I it. I always tell my kids, they'll learn the lesson one way or the other. They'll either learn it from experience or they'll learn it from me. But the, one way they're going to learn it. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and folks. carry a big stick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>